Hello, everybody on King Television. This is Eric Smith, and I'm so excited for today's Next Generation broadcast because we have speakers that I know have been praying, that have been seeking the Lord on your behalf, because we believe today is going to be a day of breakthrough, a day of transformation, a day of salvation, a day of miracles for everyone that gets a chance to watch, to watch this broadcast today. Because the Bible says it this way, the word does not return void, but it'll accomplish what it's sent forth to do. And I believe today, as people hear the messages that these men of God have prepared and they're ready to, to preach to you today, I believe your hearts are going to be open to, to receive your ears will be open to hear and we're gonna we're gonna plant some good seed on some good ground when you plant seed in good ground guess what harvest comes in and when we're talking about spiritual implications that means souls are being one to christ that means miracles are taking place that means people who are battling maybe some kind of physical issue maybe an emotional issue maybe battling depression oppression maybe addictions i believe you're going to be set free as well but here's what I always like to have you do as we first come on the air. I always like to encourage you. The Bible encourages us that we're supposed to prefer our brother and sister above ourselves. Think about some people you know, maybe five, six, seven people that might need a miracle from the Lord. Maybe they're battling some kind of chronic illness. Could be diabetes, heart disease, cancer, whatever it is. It might be people, again, that are, are battling oppression, depression. It, it, it shocks me sometimes when I find out how many people are on some kind of medications for maybe depression or or issues in their lives. You know what? There is nothing too, nothing too difficult for God. The Bible says that clearly. And I encourage you, please, let's give the Holy Spirit, let's give God a chance to impact someone's life. And you can be a part in that. You can be a God, you can be an evangelist God can use. And I'm not going to ask you to prepare a message. I'm just going to ask you to use your faith for someone else. Send a quick message to people that you know that maybe fall in those categories, need salvation, need miracles, need deliverance, need to be set free. And I believe today, as you hear these messages, we're going to see God do great things. Thank you so much. For doing that. Our first speaker today is a wonderful man of God. I love his heart and passion for souls. This is Pastor Pat Murray. He's a senior pastor of Living Word Church based in Vandalia, Ohio. Has another campus in Burkhart. Uh, just built a multi-million dollar dream center. He's doing so much for the kingdom of God. Pastor Pat, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, share with the worldwide audience what God's doing with your ministry. You know, it's been 42 years now that that I've been in, in ministry and um, the Watching God do what He's done over the years has been absolutely amazing. We've planted 13 churches total. Uh, we're presently not only ministering in the church that we founded 35 years ago, but but we're seeing uh, people at the Dream Center set free. We saw over 17,000 visits last year, and uh, it's amazing. Total Human Rehabilitation Center that God helped us to start to help people see transformation in their life through the power of God. And so we we help naturally, we help, help spiritually, and it's been an amazing r run. We're expecting much, much more this year. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Pat, for what you're doing. It's amazing just to hear the results God's blessed you with, and I know more is coming. So thanks for making a part of, of today's broadcast. Looking forward to hear the message God's given you for King Television. Our second speaker today is another wonderful man of God. This is Pastor Emilio Laredo. He's a senior pastor. Well, he's actually a Spanish pastor for Faith Family Church based in Victoria, Texas. I know he's excited about being there. Uh, pastor Emilio, thanks for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share with the worldwide audience with guys with your ministry as well. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure being with uh, uh, on King's TV, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we are getting ready to move our services from 2 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning Sundays. So there's a building, as we are as we are speaking, there's a building going up where it's going to be uh, the home of the Spanish church uh, in the area. And we're excited because uh, we have seen an exodus. I know we, we heard that there were a lot of people coming to America from all over the world, right? And our our goal, our mind is to preach the world, the, the word all over the world. But now it seems that uh, the world is coming to Victoria. Just this week, we have two new countries that uh, they were not represented in the church. One of them is Costa Rica. The other one, I think it was uh, 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 Panama. Uh, and they were, they're coming. So these people are coming to, to the area, to Victoria. And we having the opportunity to minister to them. Some of them are training the word and some of them are brand new. So we are excited because uh, uh, the Lord is doing this. And I know that he's, he's fixing to do a great thing in our area. So we praise the Lord for that. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for what you're doing, Pastor Emilio. Uh, just love to hear the testimonies and lives being changed and the impact you guys are having there in Victoria and the greater area there. So thanks for serving the Lord as much as you do and the passion you have for so many, many people. Appreciate you so very, very much. Now, listen, before I have Pastor Pat begin to minister, I want to encourage you one more time. If you haven't reached out to someone that you know that needs a miracle from the Lord, needs to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, needs to be delivered and set free, maybe some just maybe just, just they just need a message of hope today. <clears throat> please do me a favor, reach out to a handful of people, maybe send a text message, send a message through uh, social media to them, tell them the way you're watching King TV and just encourage them, say, listen, give me 55 minutes of your time today because I believe God will change your life forever. And I believe God's going to show up strong and touch them in a big, big way. And thank you so much for considering others and doing that as well. Listen, before right now, we're going to have our, one, our our first speaker come out of the gate. This is Pastor Pat Murray coming to us from Living Word Church in Vidalia, Ohio. Pastor Pat, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, bring forth the message God's given you today for King TV. Thank you. Well, it's always a joy for me to be able to be with you on King's TV and to know that all over the world right now that the gospel is accessing people that maybe don't have a church near them, maybe are in an oppressed location where where other folks wouldn't appreciate the fact that that the gospel is being preached. Nevertheless, here we are, thanks to King's TV, and I'm so thankful for the the network and for uh, Pastor Eric and our ability to join you right now. And I believe that the Lord's given me a word for all of you to encourage you, if you're a believer or if you've never really heard the gospel. I believe that this is going to be helpful for you. I'm going to call this talk that I'm going to give you right now. I'm going to call it culture shift. And every one of us have a, a culture in our life. We see through a lens because of the experience of our life. So our environment, our families, our, our community, our country, they all set culture for us. So both faith or fear come out of culture. And so the regular company you keep will decide the culture, the mindset, the expectations about life that we all have. And so culture sets expectations for today and for tomorrow based upon where we've already been. And so that's just the, the nature of the way that we all operate. Thinking is linking. And so we link our experiences to our expectations. And so when you're raising children, culture is set and the things that we would call normal or the, the expected patterns of life are set. And it's the lens that children look through for the rest of their life. And so God sent Jesus not just to, to bring a religious understanding, but to become a part of our experience. Jesus wants not just to be understood mentally, he wants to become a part of your everyday experience. That is the gospel, where God moves on the inside of you and begins to lead you and guide you to get rid of the disasters of yesterday and to emerge into possibilities that you never dreamed possible. And that is what God can do for us. It's called the culture of faith. And I believe that God wants to do a culture shift on the inside of us to move us from, from no faith to faith or to move us from little faith to great faith or to move us from, from carnal expectations and low thinking to high expectations and miracles. And that can happen for us right now. See, it's all of us today, we've got an orientation that we're listening to right now. And what we're listening in right now could be faith or fear. It could be peace or anxiety, and it could be love or hate. It could be contentment, or it could be envy. All of those things can set in, and honestly, any one of us can be subject to those according to what company we keep. That's the reason why I pray in the morning. I talk to God before I talk to anyone else, because I want the Lord to set the culture for my life and for my heart. So no matter what the challenges are that I'm going to face, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And so living in the moment, that's what Jesus wants to do to help to reset the internal culture that all of us have, where we think from, where we, where we expect from. And so after the, after the death, burial, and resurrection from Jesus, there was a couple of fellows in your Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 24, that were on their way from Jerusalem to a place called Emmaus. Now, on this walk, they'd been a little disillusioned because they expected Jesus 
to not just not to die, but to stay alive, kick Caesar off the throne of Rome and take over the world. That was their expectations, even though Jesus had told them that he would die in our place, he would rise from the dead. But they weren't at the tomb waiting for Jesus to get up after he'd been crucified. They were on their way back home, away from Jerusalem, away from the will of God. Maybe you find yourself there today in doubt because of circumstances. And today, instead of running to God, you're running from him. Maybe that's your story right now. Well, these fellows were on the road to Emmaus. One of those fellows, his name is Cleopas. And so they're on their way. And suddenly, Unbeknownst to them, Jesus joins them in resurrected form on the road, and they didn't recognize him. But they were, he was asking them, Why are you so downcast? Why is your why is your countenance so fallen? And this is what the Lord said. They, they said, Don't you, you know, don't you know where you've been? Jesus, we thought would be, you know, all that we ever dreamed that he would be, was crucified. And they say he's risen from the dead, but we're not sure. And suddenly Jesus rebukes them. They don't know it's Jesus. They're just walking on the road to Emmaus. And the Bible says that he opened up the scripture and began to teach them how that the Messiah would need to suffer and then rise from the dead. And he shared with them, well, they got to, to the Emmaus and, and they said, don't go away. We want to keep talking to you. They invited him to eat. And when Jesus broke bread at that table, their eyes were open and they recognized him. It was the Lord. And the Bible says he vanished out of their sight. And this is what it says in verse number, chapter 24 of the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, verse number 31. He says that their eyes were opened and they knew that it was him. And he vanished away out of their sight. And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while we were talking with him in the road, while, we, in, while he opened up the, us the scriptures? Jesus opened their, their hearts by giving them the word. That's what King's TV is. King's TV is all about the ability to share the word of God and to suddenly not just hear something with our head, but to digest it with our hearts. And God creates a dynasty, a culture on the inside of us of faith that burns like a fire. That's what those guys said. Didn't our hearts burn within us while he opened to us the scriptures? And so God wants to do the same thing for us today. Matter of fact, every day of your life can be a, a day filled with kingdom culture, the kingdom of God, faith in God, the love of God. God wants us to walk with him. He wants us to come out of confusion. He wants us to come out of depression and, and anger and angst and all the things that come, fear, and come into the clarity and out of confusion. And so the culture of faith, that's what Jesus brings. We begin to look through a lens that's inspired by the word, by, by his greatness. As we focus our attention upon the greatness of God, suddenly the problems of life begin to diminish. Suddenly the intimidation of the circumstances of our life begin to get weaker because we see him as the almighty God. And so God wants to help us to redefine the way that life is done. I, I, I heard a story of a pastor that pastors in Missouri in the United States. His name is Brian Zahn, and I was in a meeting with him, and he shared this story. And the story was that he was preaching in this very large church, about four or 5,000 people, and he was preaching on Daniel and the lion's den. Now, you may not be familiar with the story, but it's found in the book of Daniel. Daniel's thrown into a lion's den, and Pastor Brian was teaching a series on this. Well, he happened to have a lion tamer or a circus lion tamer in his church who lived and went to his church. And he said, well, Pastor Brian, he said, uh, maybe you'd like for me to, to um, uh, use a male lion on the platform while you're doing the series. And so he literally preached a, a sermon with a 500-pound male lion. The mane on the thing was huge. And here it is. Uh, on that on that platform while I was preaching. Well, after the service, the lion tamer invited him to come to the house and feed the lion. Well, it's an interesting experience for sure. But Pastor Brian was an ex expecting to take food, meat of some sort, and just toss it over the rail where the lion was on the inside of the cage. Instead, the lion tamer opened the door, walked into the cage with the lion, and invited Pastor Brian to come in. And it was it was a shock, but 
He walked in the cage anyway. Suddenly that male lion fixes his attention on Pastor Brian and begins to walk his direction with his lion eyes focused on Brian. He walked over to Brian. He took his paw that was that big, wrapped it around the back of his leg, and his fangs were that long, and he begins to gnaw on the corner of his pant leg. And Brian says to the lion tamer, he says, what's he doing? And he says, he's a big cat. He wants you to pet him. And so Brian said he took his hand and and it disappeared into the mane of that huge lion. And he started to purr. He said it sounded like a Volkswagen that was idling. Powerful experience. He said, in that moment, I was fully alive. I felt every heartbeat. I wasn't thinking about anything else. He said, that lion wasn't a part of my experience. I was a part of his. He said, it was the, it was the difference between, and I'll use these words, the subjective opinion of a lion and the objective opinion of a lion. See, objective reporting is standing outside of the facts and reporting the facts. It's objective view. In other words, I'm out here looking at the facts. I'm not in them. I'm just telling you about them. That's the zoo ver version of a lion. That's the lion behind the cage. But Brian was inside the cage now, and the view was completely different. His understanding of what a lion was in that moment was completely redefined. He said, in that moment, I was fully alive. That is what Jesus wants to do with us. There's way too many theorists in the body of Christ. There's way too many people who understand Jesus objectively. They understand him religiously. They understand him as memory verses and church experiences, but they don't necessarily live in the grasp. They don't live in the subjective grasp of God. And I believe that that's what God wants for all of you. He wants us to be able to look through the lens of faith where we feel every heartbeat in the presence of God, that God wants to do something extraordinary in your life and in your heart and change the way that you look at the world around you. That's because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is living on the inside of you, and he's making that kind of subjective difference, living in the grasp of God. And now I'll show you some several experiences, but the disciples' experience in the body of Christ, when, when Jesus called his disciples in, they had a front row seat to what they never thought that they would ever see in their life. Healings and miracles, multiplying of meals, walking on water, all the things that, that the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell us about the earth walk of Jesus, about his time spent on the earth, and, and it, it, th their lives were being changed. They were called to follow him and observe him, and suddenly they were invited in to begin to minister for him in his name, and they said, even the devils are subject unto us in, in your name. And Jesus gave them authority. They weren't born again. They weren't Christians yet. Jesus hadn't died and rose from the dead. But but in this in Mark or Matthew chapter 14 passage, uh, they were they were out on the water. They were they were learning about Jesus. They were learning to heal the sick and preach good news and and minister deliverance to people. And so they're out on the boat. Jesus is behind and they're out on a boat in Matthew 14, and they're rowing, and it's late at night. The wind is against them, and suddenly Jesus comes walking on the water by the boat, and they all kind of uh, are afraid, and so it, they freak out for a while, and then Jesus said, don't be afraid, it's me, and Peter said this bizarre phrase. He said, if that's you out there on the water, bid me to come out there and walk on the water with you. Now, that is a, an amazing request. Do you think Peter, the first day he ever met Jesus, would have ever made that request? I say no. He wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have assumed that he was welcome in the ministry, that he was welcome to follow Jesus, or he was certainly welcome to do the things that, that Jesus did. But you have to understand, Jesus, they've been following the Lord, and they've been watching the miracles, the things they never dreamed possible, lepers being cleansed and the sick being healed. Today can be that day. But they were watching it, 
And then they were invited into the ministry of power and an exciting transition that took place in people's lives because Jesus is the magnificent lover of our souls and he's the power of God in manifestation. And so what got into Peter to ask to get out of a perfectly good boat and walk on the water? And it was what was inspired. It was the culture that was beginning to set on the inside of him. Maybe to you, maybe right now, God is picking up your expectations and it's and it's coming up as you're hearing the word of God preached. Have you seen Jesus clear enough? Have you followed him close enough? Have you watched him respond to life like he has and does? Have you watched it enough for it to begin to take over your expectations? See, that's the culture shift that I believe that God wants for every one of us. He wants us to shift over into the culture of faith, the, the kind of faith that says, I know what Jesus would do in this circumstance. He would heal the sick. He would raise the dead. He would set the captives free. He would cast out devils, and he would bring joy and, and supply into the circumstance. And so that's that's where Peter was. He was in the midst of this culture shift happening inside of him, and he makes this bizarre request. Lord, if that's you out there on the water... Help me to get out of the boat. Ask me to come and walk on the water with you. I'm sure Jesus had a smile on his face. He said, come, come. And he steps out of the boat and walks on the water. He was walking on the word. If Jesus said, I can come, I can come. If Jesus said, you can do it, you can do it too. You just got to get out of where you are and begin to walk by faith. Now, there was 11 other guys in the boat we know, and they didn't ask to get out of the boat. They'd seen the same things. They'd been to the ch same church services. They'd followed the same Savior. But they didn't get out of the boat. Only Peter got out of that boat. And boy, did they all learn a lesson at Peter's expense. Because the Bible says he took his eyes off of Jesus in the midst of a miracle, and he began to sink. But Jesus reached down and caught him by the hand and pulled him back up to the top of the water, and they walked back to the boat together. I just want you to understand today that kingdom manifestation, the manifestations of Jesus, it, it comes because we hang out with him, because we spend time with him, that we admire him, that we worship him. We should worship him all the time, magnifying God every day, every way that we can. And the Father will bring us into this kingdom understanding. If we'll get on the heels of Jesus like those guys did, God will begin to recreate the culture of our heart. No, I'm not talking about religion. Reading the word is important. Going to church is important. Matter of fact, there should be celebrations of the presence of God. But my dear friend, whether or not you're with anyone now that has any agreement in the, the faith called Christianity or not, today you can magnify God. You can see him in the word. You can celebrate his goodness and his greatness and his power and not allow the boat culture to freeze you from doing the will of God. Don't, don't be boat people. <laughs> be, be people that are willing to step out in faith and believe God. Don't allow that culture to continue to crush you and push you down. Let the culture of the kingdom begin to build you up. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life today, he wants to come in and be a, not just the Lord of your life, but a part of your life experience. And that's what God will do for you. He will change your life like no one else could. And today that resurrection power will touch you and set you free. And in a moment, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to believe God for miracles and breakthroughs in your life. But Jesus wants to invite you into the impossible. Do you hear it? He wants to do things in your life that you never thought possible. And so things go wrong. But hey, if you start to sink, Jesus will be right there to pick you up. It just requires a step of faith. And today, that step of faith is maybe just praying this prayer with me in a minute and saying, Jesus, I need you in my life. And if you're as real as Pastor Pat told me, I need you in my life. Please come into my life. And God will not only forgive your sins, that he hung on a cross to pay for all of our sins, and then he was taken down and put into a tomb for three days, and then Jesus rose from the dead. And when he rises from the dead, you rise with him. And when he comes into your life, he puts resurrection life our life that never quits on the inside of you. And we'll wake up to it. Suddenly, miracles become relevant in every area of our life because the miracle worker lives on the inside. I want to pray with you today. I know that God wants to create a brand new culture on the inside of you. And today, God's inviting you out of the boat and onto the water.
And so I want you to pray with me. And, and any needs that you have, we're going to pray for miracles as well. And we're just going to trust the Lord. And, and we three are going to just believe God for you. And the number that's on your screen, by all means, call that number on your screen because there's somebody there to pray you through, pray through the issues of your life. Believe God for miracles and breakthroughs for you in this time of need that you may have. But right now, I want to say, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of who you are today, he's listening and he's as close as the mention of his name and he will come into your life and he's going to do miracles in you just like he did in me. Pray this prayer with me. Dear God in heaven. I come in the name of Jesus, and I know that you're the Son of God, and I know that you died for me, and I know that you rose from the dead. I ask you to be the Lord of who I am. Now and forever, I give my life to you. I turn from my sins, and I look to you to not only make me a believer and make me a Christian, but I ask that you would create a powerful culture of faith on the inside of me. And I know I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, Heavenly Father, I thank you today. If you can save our soul, you can heal our bodies. And I thank you, Master, that by your stripes we were healed. Those painful stripes and whipping that you took upon your back, and I thank you now, Father, that the price has been paid. And so, Lord, I just stretch out my faith right now for the power of heaven to touch, Lord God, millions of people watching right now that need your miracle touch. Thank you for kingdom breakthrough. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Loose the people of God and let them go. And Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise now for breakthrough, blessing, love, and increase. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Pastor Eric. Thank you so much, Pastor Pat. Great, great message. Now, listen, if you prayed that first prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's the greatest prayer you could ever pray. I want to sing welcome to the family of God. The Bible now says your name is what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And everybody on the earth, all 8.3 billion of us are going to stand before God someday and give an account for what we've done here on the earth. And for those of you that prayed that prayer, here's what you're going to hear from God himself. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. It's the greatest words you're going to hear out of the mouth of God. And guess what? If you prayed that prayer, that's exactly what you're going to hear. Welcome to the family of God. You know what Jesus did for us on that cross? By shedding his blood for my sins and for your sins, God has now taken your sins and thrown them, the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west. That might be a little difficult for us to understand when you're a brand new Christian, but here's what it means. God looks at you right now. It doesn't make a difference if you're age 80, age 50, age 15. God looks at you right now as if you've never sinned before. Think about that. That's the love of God that he says, only begotten son of this earth to live a sinless life, to die and shed his blood for my sins and for your sins. What a God we serve. So please, if you just received Christ as your Savior, call that number on your screen right now and tell King TV, I just came to Christ. Listen to Pastor Pat. I was moved and the Holy Spirit touched my heart. And I'm so glad. Guess what? We're going to talk about some next steps with you. If you have become the, if you have come to Christ, Pastor Pat kind of hit on this. I want to encourage you. You got to do three things. You want to find yourself immediately a good full gospel church in the city that you're in. Now this network's going into 182 nations of the world, but it's important for you to be around a good shepherd. Uh, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 10:25, we're supposed to forsake not the assembly ourselves. You know why? God knew there was strength in numbers. So when you get to that church, make sure you tell that pastor, listen, I just came to Christ watching TV. And that pastor is going to be giving you a lot of special attention. He's going to put you around some amazing people who are going to help you the walk of Christ. Again, find yourself a good church. Begin looking for it today. Be in that church this Sunday. Pray and talk to God. You might say, oh, Brother Eric, uh, I, you know, what do I say? You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, we can cast our cares upon him, our Heavenly Father. You know why? He cares for you. He's got great things in store for you. He's not up, He's not in heaven, you know, throwing lightning bolts down on us. He's in heaven throwing blessings upon us. He wants to give us life and life abundantly. And the third thing you want to do is you want to get yourself a Bible. Listen, it's important for you to read your Bible every single day. You might say, oh, Brother Eric, I, I wish I could afford a Bible. I can't afford a Bible. I have good news for you. You can download Bibles onto a phone, a tablet, a computer. It won't cost you a penny. Just as you eat natural food every day, please read God's Word every day. You'll be amazed how God will guide you, lead you, help you make good decisions. The Spirit of God will direct you as you're reading different scriptures. It's amazing how that Bible just begins to speak to you every time you pick it up. Do those three things. Watch how God will transform your life. And I believe... Uh, that Pastor Pat, as he prayed that prayer for miracles, again, you don't have to pray a prayer that takes 27 minutes. 
You, you call on the name of the Lord, the Bible says you shall be saved. Guess what? You call on the name of the Lord to be healed, he can heal you that quick as well. And I believe that if if, if you're battling physical issues, maybe you had pain in your back, your your head, your, your legs, whatever it is, I encourage you, check it. Check yourself. If you couldn't move your arm, begin to move your arm. I believe you're going to get mobility back. I believe pain has left your body. And if that is the case, do me a favor. The Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. Call that number and share your testimony that I just been healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Again, we want to rejoice with you. It never gets old to hear miracle testimonies as well. Please do me a favor. Call that number and share your victory if you would. Pastor Pat, thanks again for your, for your message today. Powerful, powerful word, sir. Our second speaker today is another wonderful man of God. Get ready, King Television. This is Pastor Emilio Laredo coming from Faith Family Church in Victoria, Texas. Pastor Emilio, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, bring forth the message God's given you today for King TV. Thank you, Lord. My Pastor Pat, tremendous word. Uh, definitely, God created us for a purpose. And sometimes, you know, we are raised, we are born. We grow up in a culture, but that is not the culture that God planned for you. The Lord planned for you to be in the culture of Christ. And I just want to praise the Lord. The Lord has been speaking to my heart, you know, how God uh, intentionally created you. And, uh, and he created you because he had a plan and a purpose. In other words, purposely you were created. And you were created for a purpose. And that's kind of what I want to talk, continue in what uh, Pastor Pat shared with us today. And uh, the thing is this, that, you know, we we are born in, in our season, in our time. And we are born in an environment. I remember growing up, I marvel every day, you know, how the Lord has allowed me to, to be used by him in places that I would have never dreamed. Uh, the Lord has uh, allowed me to meet people, to talk to people, and to bring people to Christ and that, that I would have never even imagined that I would be close to some of those people. But this is the thing that God raises men and women, you know, uh, on, on, on different times and different seasons because that is the plan and the purpose that God has for each one of those men, just like in the Bible, you know, uh, Pastor Pat was sharing that tremendous testimony. I don't know if I wanted to get inside a cage with a lion, you know, but uh, uh, we talk about uh, uh, Daniel, you know, how the Lord raised him at that time that he had to go to this, this thing because that was his time where God was going to bring him into God's culture in order to show who God is. Uh, so there's people out of, out of uh, you know, that they're not common people to the standards of this world. Uh, people like Peter, you know, Peter wasn't, uh, I, I would say, uh, according to the, to the religious people of that time, he was below average because, you know, hey, he's not learned, he doesn't have preparation. But when the Lord, you know, got a hold of him. Yes, I know that he got out of that boat and he walked towards Jesus, but then we know him as the one that started sinking. Many times we don't remember that he's the only one after Jesus that walked on water, but uh, we remember that he started sinking. The thing is this, yes, but the Lord raised him to be like that, and then is the one that the Lord used to stand up. After Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit came and started sharing the word. And if you listen to those, those messages that he uh, preached at the beginning of the book of Acts, the boldness that he will say, you know, this Jesus, that not too long ago, you, you persecuted and you crucify and you kill. You know, that is the son of God. That's the, that's the one that the Lord had, had promised through all these prophecies. But now if you believe in him, you know, he came for you to believe in him. And we know about the thousands of people that gave their life to the Lord. So I want to tell you, I don't know your situation. I don't know who you are. Maybe you are like me at one time, you know, that you didn't feel that you had a purpose to be alive. That you had a reason to be alive. That there was no future for you. I want to encourage you right now, and I want to. Uh, uh, I want you to receive this word that God created you on purpose 
for a purpose for this time. But that purpose is going to be fulfilled whenever you allow Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life. This is what Pastor Pat was sharing. You know, Jesus will bring you to the culture that you belong because you were not created for this world. Let me tell you, you were not created for hell. You know, sometimes, you know, we mess up so bad that we think the only thing that waits for us is something bad, hell. But, you know, God did not create you for hell. As a matter of fact, hell was created for Satan and his angel. You were created to be the recipient of the love of God. You were created to be part of the family of God. You were created to be the house, the temple of the Spirit of God. That is your purpose. And the reason why is because God, the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, planned to show himself, to manifest himself through you. You carry the culture of God because of the Holy Spirit that, that the Lord wants to place in you. And that happens whenever you realize that you are a sinner. And it doesn't take much for, you know, for us to understand that we have messed up. But it takes a little bit of effort to believe that Jesus Christ is the only way that can take us to God. You know, and I tell people, you know, but uh, that believe that they, there's many ways and all the religions take you to heaven. You know, I say, you know, God is God is a lot smarter than us. And God will not send his only begotten son. If there was already 300 ways to go to God, I don't think God will send his only son to die and to become the road to God number 301. The reason why Jesus came is because Jesus is 100% God. Jesus was born of a virgin and he's 100% man. There's nobody else that is 100% God and 100% man. Only Jesus. And that's what he was needed for somebody to make a way for us to go to God. Somebody that he was God and somebody that he was man to make a bridge, to make a way to God. And that's why the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by Him. And because God had planned that only through the shedding of blood there was going to be forgiveness of sin, then Jesus came to this world as the Lamb of God with a purpose of taking your place and my place at the cross of Calvary and dying in our place and paying for our sins. That's why Jesus died. And the thing is this, that because he was God, he said, nobody's taking my life. I'm giving my life for you. I'm giving my body and I'm shedding my blood for you. And that's why on the third day, Jesus Christ Conquer death, conquer sin, conquer Satan, conquer the world, and rose from the dead. And now we serve a living Savior, somebody that is alive. This is the wonderful thing that he said. I will not leave you like an orphan, but I will send my spirit. And once Jesus manifest the, and, 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 you know, visit the, uh, his disciples and other believers for 40 days, he ascended to heaven and he sent the promise of the Holy Spirit that God says, I will cause to dwell in you. When you say, Father, I understand that I am a sinner. I have messed up. Please forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Savior at that very moment. God Almighty sends his spirit and comes and seals you and put his living spirit in you. The spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, the spirit that created this universe is the one that lives in you. That's why Jesus said, 
he that believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do an even greater works. So I want you to understand that even though right now you might not see a clear purpose in your life, I can tell you this much. The purpose of you being alive today is for you to come and know my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you can do the, the movement from going to condemnation, going to hell, to come and become a servant, a representative of the Almighty God. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says that we're peculiar people. We are people out of the, you know, out of the common people because God created you so you can be his representative. This is, he said that you are chosen by God. You he had made you his priest. Uh, his priest, you are part of a holy nation. You are the people of God. You are the family of God as you receive uh, Christ. But the purpose is for God to be able to show his greatness and his love and his power and his mercy through you. And this will happen whenever, number one, you believe in the one that was sent by God. Because the Bible says in, in John 3, 36, he that believes in the Son has eternal life, but he that refuses to believe in the Son has already been condemned. So the first thing that you got to do is believe in the one that God has sent. Number two, you have to believe his message. Believe the word of God. That is the, 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 the letters of love of God. And Mark says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he will not be condemned. So not only believe that God sent Jesus, but believe his word. Make the decision that the word of God is what rules, what directs, what guides your life. And that is going to cost you to live in this culture that Pastor Pat was talking about. You do not believe belong to this world. We walk through this world, but we are the light of this world. We are the salt of this world. We are what, what, what is giving flavor to this world. We are what is giving light to this world because of the one that lives in us. And thirdly, I would say, you know, be a doer of the word. You know, if you believe in Christ, then practice what he has uh, told us, his word. Practice his word, live his word, uh, which, you know, it comes back to this, to this uh, truth that uh, uh, Brother Eric was sharing. You know, one of the biggest blessings that God has lived and le left to us through Jesus Christ is the ability to be able to communicate with God the Father. With God the Father, we can go to Him, not a chain, not see if He is willing to hear us. But Jesus says, if you go to Him in my name, my Father will hear you and I will answer your prayers. So you can go to God every day. That's why I love what Pastor Pat says, you know, before I talk to anybody, I talk to God. Get, get. Get the right direction, you know, and that is a blessing. I remember the first time I know I shared this before when my pastor told me I had not read the Bible. My pastor told me now you can talk to God. And you know what? I asked God to heal my mother and my mother was healed from that time on. God hears you. Number two, he has given you the word. You have direction. You know what to do. You don't have to go and ask people, hey, what should I do? Read the word of God. Yeah, there's always men of God, women of God that will be willing to encourage you and to walk with you. And, and thirdly, hang around with those people. Hang around with the body of Christ. Because you know what? We are his family. And we are here to make the statement that God is real and that Jesus is coming soon. So real quick, I'm going to pray for you. Number one. 
just right there where you are, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Savior. Forgive me. Thank you for Jesus. Forgive me of my sins, and I receive you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have made that prayer, your life will never be the same. I'm here to tell you, 53 years after I made that prayer, that God has not let me down. Now, I want to agree with people because one of the beautiful things is that God reaffirms, confirms his word by doing signs and wonders and miracles. There's people right now that need healing. I'm just going to say a simple prayer right there where you are. The Lord is touching you and he's proving to you that he loves you and he cares for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over spirit of sickness and disease over any illness and disease, and we bind it in Jesus' name. We command oppression to go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak healing to sickness of the mind. Be gone in Jesus' name, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray for new hearts, new livers, new lungs right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch people all over this world, Father, and let them know how much you love them. Father, in Jesus' name, I say the word. Be healed in Jesus' name. Call that number. Let somebody know that the Lord has touched your life. Let him know also that you receive Christ. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Pastor Me. You'll get a great, great message. Now, listen, if you just pray to pray to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, the Bible says it this way in Romans 10, 9, if we believe in our heart and we confess our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, it is that simple. You're born again. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. And if you prayed that prayer or something similar to that, guess what? I want you to call the number on the screen right now because people are standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because we want to know your story. We want to know your victory. We want to know your breakthrough as well. And I also sense as Pastor Me was praying, many were being touched many were being healed. And again, a simple definition of a miracle is simply this. If you had pain before Pastor Medio prayed and the pain's gone, that's a miracle. So please don't delay. The devil will tell you, call the number tomorrow, the next day. You won't do it. The Bible says now faith is. Just as you use your faith for the very first time when you prayed a prayer to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your life and God to forgive your sins, your faith worked the very first time. Guess what? Your faith can work for miracles as well. And again, if you prayed that prayer, you can just say, Lord, I, you know, Lord, I thank you for just touching my body, pain being gone. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for me on the whipping post because you took all the stripes on that back. So my, I don't have to live with sickness. I don't have to live with disease. I don't have to live with virus or infirmity or any kind of illness because you, Jesus, have done it all. So if you prayed that prayer like Pastor Mueller just prayed and the pain is gone, please, please don't delay. Call that number on your screen and tell King TV. Yeah, I had pain in my, my maybe you're battling, maybe you've been battling like arthritis for many, many years and your joints have been painful. I, check your joints now, move your hands, move your legs, move your arms. I bet you're going to find that pain is gone. I've also sensed many people are, are, are receiving even creative miracles where maybe a tumor is disappearing off your body. So I encourage you, check yourself. Maybe you had a cyst, you had a growth, check yourself. I bet you're going to find a God's test you as well. And if he has, which I know he has, please call that number on your screen and give your testimony if you would. Pastor Emilio, thanks again so much, sir. We appreciate you very, very much. Our third and final speaker today is another wonderful, excuse me, man of God. This is Jeff Caudell. He and his wife, Tracy, oversee Restoration Ministries based out of Jefferson City, Tennessee, doing amazing work, helping so many different people. Pastor Jeff, thanks for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, bring forth the message God's given you today for King TV. Yeah, thank you, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. What an honor to join you uh, today and join people in 182 nations uh, to bring the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in my region, we're affected by the hurricane, oddly enough, in Tennessee. Uh, so uh, we've been out helping uh, some folks uh, even today, getting them some things that they need. But you know what? I'm here to tell you today that the hand of God is available for all of those who are out there within the sound of my voice to reach out and touch you. So I'm going to get right to it. So, you know, this comes to me through an inspiration I had with my father. Uh, he was uh, on his deathbed uh, and uh, he'd had a surgery. He was in his 80s and uh, it should have been a surgery that wasn't to death. Uh, it should have been a fairly simple process, but it didn't go well. And uh, some internal bleeding occurred. Things happened that were out of what seemed to be the doctor's control. And uh, they called the family in uh, and said, you know, it doesn't look like he's going to make it. And, uh, you know, as that time went on, he continued to make it. He continued to, to uh, survive, and, you know, that was through prayer and the, the goodness of God. 
Uh, but in those times, you know, the doctors kept coming in and saying, you know, it could be it could be any time. And so as that time lingered, we would take turns being in his room. And as we were in his room, uh, it became my turn to be there with my father. Uh, my father is my best friend. And, uh, you know, he's been a great man of God, a great example in my life. And as I was laying, sitting there by his, his bedside, you know, and he wasn't really um, audible at this point in time, uh, he stretched out his hand and he grabbed my hand. And even though I was in an experience where I was experiencing great anxiety, I felt like my strength, I felt, felt powerless. Like I couldn't do anything for the man who was, who was the rock of my life outside of Jesus Christ. And it was, it was humbling, but he squeezed my hand. And in that moment, I felt this uh, peace come about me. I felt the love of a father who was extended to me. I felt strength and I felt help. I felt like, you know what? I can stand, I can go on just because of the touch of my father's hand. I want to let you know today that God the Father is so much greater than my father, and he's extending his hand today to reach out to you. So I want to go to Isaiah 41, and we're going to read verse 10. It says this, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. So those are the three things I want to talk about to you today, that God's hand, his mighty hand is available for you, for me, for all of us to strengthen us, to help us, and to uphold us, to lift us up. Let's start with God's hand strengthening us. So we can find all kinds of examples. I'm going to just list the verse. I would encourage you to, to look them up if you have a Bible. Uh, Luke 22, 69 says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God in the position of great power. I just want to let you know that Jesus is your advocate. He is on your side. He is on the right hand, the position of authority with God Almighty. And what's he doing? He's making intercession for us. And he's doing that, that we might be strengthened. He's doing that on our behalf. If Jesus, the Son of God, is making an intercession for you, the Bible tells me that the prayers of the righteous are effective. Well, how much more righteous can one get than Jesus Christ? He's praying for you. If he's praying for you, then things will happen on your behalf and you will receive strength. Psalm 16, 8 through 11 says that you will not be shaken. You know, storms will come. It will. It says in the Bible, many of the are the afflictions of the righteous. We experience those afflictions. It's a part of this thing called life, a part of the, the sin and the curse that's been on this earth. But here's the good news. If we hold on to that hand of God that is extended to us, when the storms come, we might be blown around, but we're not going to be up to the place where we're going to be knocked off of our feet, knocked into a place where we can't function we are going to be in a place where we will not be shaken, but we'll stand firm on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of our faith. Then Philippians 4.13, we're talking about being strengthened. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Isn't that great news? It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. I'm experiencing and seeing loved ones, friends in my community who've lost things, lost some, some have lost everything. But you know what? It doesn't limit what God is doing in that environment. He's reaching out. And I'm telling you today, his right hand is, is sufficient to pull you out of whatever situations you find yourself in. Nothing is impossible for him. All things are possible. You can do all things because Christ Jesus, he strengthens you. God's hand, it helps you. First Peter 5, 6 through 11 talks about God uh, taking God's hand and he will help you and he will lift you up. You know, when I have, I have 10 grandkids, hallelujah. I love those kids. I love being with them. And there's not much more that touches my heart than when that little grandchild reaches up his hands to grab his papa's hand and holds on to me, you know? It's like, I'm there and I'm gonna help him. Well, every once in a while, 
we find ourselves an opportunity to be in a swimming pool. Well, they all think they can swim better than they really can, but they trust their, their papa to get there and extend his hand and offer a hand of help when they get over their head and when they get beyond their capability. God Almighty is extending a helping hand to you. When you get in a situation beyond yourself, beyond your control, beyond your strength, God is there for you. And if he is for you, who can be against you? Psalm 118.7 says, the Lord is my helper and allows me to triumph over my enemies. Isn't that great news? He is your helper. You, we all have enemies. We all face things. We all have an enemy in Satan that's constantly trying to kill, seek, and destroy everything within our lives. But God, he is a good God. He is a helping God, and he is able, and he's willing to provide help to you to triumph over your enemies. I love it that he says he's made your enemy your footstool. Part of him sitting on the right hand of God is saying, you have that authority. We sing a song, he's under our feet, that Satan is under our feet. You know, I grew up in, in the church where, you know, Eric's ministry now and the kids ministry was awesome. When they would take up the tithe and offering in the kids ministry, one of the members wrote this song called, I want to punch that devil in the nose. And they would give their offering and they would say, I give a right hook for Jesus and the left for the Holy Ghost. And some volunteer was holding a puppet of the devil. And these, especially the little boys were wearing this thing out, punching him in the nose. God is your helper. He will help you to defeat the enemy. Isaiah 41, 13, God's hand will help you to keep you from fear. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power of might and a sound mind. God is, is for you. He's not against you. He's working what the enemy intended for evil and working that for good. He is for you, and he is for you to give you that power that you have a sound mind. The battlefield is in our mind. Satan will attack in our thought life. But God says, you know what? If you renew your mind, if you transform your mind by the washing of the word, that you will receive your help. And where does your help come from? Your help comes from the Lord. Third point, God's hand, it upholds you. Isaiah 64, 8, you know, it says that we are the clay and that he is the potter. You know, sometimes we get broken in life, just like a piece of pottery can get broken. But you know what? Good news. God can put us back on the wheel and allow us to be transformed, remolded, reshaped for his purpose. God's purpose for you and your life is eternal. It's not temporal. If you've slipped, if you've fallen, think of this. Peter, what did he do? He denies Christ three times. What does God do? He comes back, the master potter, and he says, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Well, then feed my sheep. He restored him to be the rock in which the church would be built on. And then you see in Acts, when the impartation of the Holy Spirit comes, he has thousands coming to Christ because he is walking into position. But we can be in that position when we have fallen that God will lift us up. John 10, 24 and 30. No one can snatch you out of the Father's hand. There's nothing that can happen to you. God says he will never leave you or forsake you. He's not gonna leave you stranded and abandoned. He is there for you and his hand is there for you. Although things will come and temptations will try to come at you, God is greater than those things. And he has given us the authority to overcome those. And if we hang on to his hand, his mighty hand, nothing can snatch us away from his hand. Psalm 73, 23 through 26 God is always with you when you hold his hand. If you hang on to God, if you be relentless, if you be diligent, if you be steadfast, hanging on to the hand of God, he will hold on to you. As we draw near to him, he draws near to us. His hand will uphold you. And what will it do? It will guide you. God gave me a prophetic word as I was going through a season where I was just, I didn't have any idea what the next step for my life was and where we were headed. And I was like, God, show me the plan. I'm a planner. I've been in, in uh, business for about 40 years in leadership. My, uh, my part of my job has been strategic initiatives. And it's like, God, I like five-year plans and 10-year plans and 20-year plans. And he's just like, you know, he said, your plan, what you need to worry about is following me. And I said, God, I just can't see the next thing. And he said this, my wife is five foot tall. And when we go on a walk, she always walks in front of me. I'm six foot tall and I'm fairly wide. And so she always walks in front because she always wants to see. She goes, 
God said to me, you're like your wife on a wall. You want to be able to see what's ahead of you. You want to see the plan. You want to see the future. He goes, I am your future and I'm leading you to it. God's hand is taking hold of you and will guide you to your destiny. He will guide you to the path that he has created for you. If you hold on to his hand, he will uphold you and he will renew your strength. He will put you in a place where you'll accomplish all that he has called you to do. And so I just want to encourage you today that God's hand is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. His power is sufficient. And he wants to strengthen you today. He wants to help you in whatever area you need help in today. He wants to uphold you. Think about this. One of the great patriarchs of the faith, Moses, he could not hold his hands up when he was praying over the battle. And his, he became weary and his, his arms dropped. And when his arms dropped, it said the battle began to be lost. So what happened? He, he, he took Aaron and her and they held his hands up. I'm telling you today, God will uphold your hands. He will put people in your life that are good people that will hold your hands up when you're too weak to go on. Surround yourself with people of God, with like-minded faith who will strengthen and encourage you. You know, I'm reminded today that God's hand is so strong. I have such a great example through my father who, good news, he survived that surgery. He survived those things. He's still, I was just at his house this last week and we spent time with him. He's 83 years old and a great blessing to my life. But God is there for you. His hand is there for you. So I wanna take an opportunity as I close out to just pray uh, for you right now. You know, one of the biggest things we need God's hand for is we need to accept his hand that's being reached out to us, offering us eternal life and salvation. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for this day. I thank you for all of those who have heard these messages today, Lord God. I thank you that you declare in your word, today is the day of salvation. I thank you, Lord, that today is someone out there, many people out there's day of salvation. So if you need Jesus right now, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that I've fallen short. Lord, I have sinned. But Lord God, I know that you're greater than that through your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in him who I believe, who I accept as my savior. Oh, I come into my life and into my heart. And as he died for me, I will live for him. Now, if you said that prayer, call that number on your screen. Tell somebody, this is your spiritual birthday. Here it is, October the 2nd. You are a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away and all things become new. That's a great day for you. And now I just want to quickly just speak to those things. If you're in a place where you say, you know what, I just feel so weak and I just feel like I need help. I want to pray for you. Lord God, I thank you right now that those who are weak, Lord, lean into you because when we are weak, you are strong. Lord, I pray right now that you give supernatural strength to your people, Lord God, whether it's fear, physical, spiritual, or emotional. Some, someone out there right now is having an emotional crisis. I take authority over the thoughts that are happening in their mind in Jesus' name, and I align their thoughts with your thoughts, Lord God, that are higher, that are greater. And I declare that they will see who they are in Christ, that they are chosen, that they are strong, that they are courageous, Lord God, that they're a child of God and that they will walk from this day forth as your child with your power, hanging on to your mighty right hand. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I thank you and praise you. Thank you, Brother Eric, for this great opportunity. Bless you all out there in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jeff. Great, great message. Now, listen, please do what the man of God just told you to do. If you prayed a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says in Psalms 46.1, that he, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And as soon as you call on his name, guess what? The Bible says you can be saved. So if you prayed that prayer, it doesn't take, thankfully, it doesn't have to take 27 prayers, the same prayer. It doesn't take us wearing sackcloth and ashes anymore, praise the Lord. We can go boldly to the throne room. And if we ask God to forgive us of our sins, guess what? He's faithful and just to do just that when you say it with a sincere heart. So congratulations if you prayed that prayer. Please call that number on your screen right now. Now, if you're watching right now, I've been getting messages from King TV several times throughout the broadcast that they're full, the lines have been full several times because people are sharing their miracle testimonies, sharing their salvation experiences. And right now, the lines are full right now. So if you are trying to call, 
I encourage you, don't be discouraged. I want you to be encouraged because so many people from around the world are responding to these messages. And the Bible says when we lift Jesus up, he draws all men and women unto him. Today's been an amazing day by the thousands of people coming to Christ. So listen, if the line gets busy from time to time, and it does, just call back four, five, six minutes later. Because again, people are standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I promise they'll be there to answer your call, talk with you, talk about your next steps as well. And if you've got a miracle testimony or, or you've, excuse me, you've been delivered and set free, maybe you're battling depression, you felt that thing just lift off of you, please. Again, don't delay. Call that number and tell King TV, I got a miracle testimony to share. And those people are going to stand on the line. They're going to listen to you. They're going to rejoice with you. They're going to they're going to celebrate what God has done for you in your life. So please do me a favor. Call that number and share a testimony if you have one as well. Team, I want to say thank you for your time. I always tell you this all the time. But you know, one thing we never go back is time. You invested over an hour into 182 nations of the world. The lines are full right now. People are calling by, by the droves, giving God praise for what he has done for them today. So we just thank you for your time and thank him for what he's doing in these people's lives. For those of you who watch King TV on a regular basis, I always like to encourage you, pray for Pastors John and Rachel Javette. They're doing all they can to win souls literally all over the world. And for those of you that watch this network day in and day out, I always like to encourage you, put your hope, your trust, your faith in God. You know why? He cares for you. Until next time, this is Eric Smith saying we love you. We're praying for you. Bye-bye for now.